background Oh, you know how that makes me I might sleep in all day I might party all night Might not see the sun Until the sunrise Women lick a boo Wake up every morning to read Women lick a boo Wake up every morning to read Women lick a boo Wake up every morning to read Women lick a boo Wake up every morning to read If I mix the coke with the hand Then you know that I'm getting bent if I light it up, nigga, then You know a nigga getting lit I ain't tripping on a nigga chick Cause she ain't better than the one I'm with Getting money, nigga, street smart Cause I hustle till I'm dumb rich Last night I passed out drunk Woke up in the morning still tipsy Off the coke and that rum Oh you know how that makes me I might sleep in all day I might party all night Might not see the sun Until the sunrise to connect with them on on that level and it was just man it was just being human and treating them like human beings and really trying to understand them and really trying to help them and it made a made a huge difference and you know um when that program ran its course and then the COVID thing came in it gave me an opportunity to um you know revamp the approach based upon now what i'd had in terms of experience inside the prison system what I understood needed to be implemented, the structure and so forth that needs to be implemented in order for, uh, you know, for anybody trying to bring education to that situation, you know, to be effective. Uh-huh. There's certain, certain experiences that you have to have in place, otherwise you, you just won't see it. So having had those experiences, we understood that, you know, um, there needed to be a great many other educational aspects and structural, you know, um, educational aspects incorporated into it. You know, the first bout was really about connecting and being able to establish the relationships and establish the reputation and so forth within the system, which I had been effective be able to do. Um, now, I have gotten a HBCU in South Carolina called Class, like the Howard equivalent in South Carolina. I've gotten them involved. And they are my educational partners. So my uh, program is called the Mind Plug Academy. And um, if a person has uh, college credits or a high school diploma and has an interest in pursuing the higher education opportunities that our, as my educational partners, Claflin, have you know, are, are bringing, which is a bachelor's, a four-year degree in um, a bachelor's for um, psychology uh-huh. or business or liberal arts and even if they don't finish it while they're in prison it will continue to be paid for for them when they get out of prison uh-huh. um, 
And uh, if you don't have the credits necessary or the high school diploma or whatever, whatever, then you can, uh, you know, again, you can go to the Mind Plug Academy. Um, and once you complete Mind Academy, then that will ready you, prepare you for the, um, uh, the Claflin aspect of it, the college aspect of it. And uh, so that's, uh, you know, how we're, we're facilitating that. In addition to that, I brought on my realtor, the lady who, bought, who sold my house to me in, uh, when I got there. And uh, she is uh, NACA certified, which is like, she really is very, she's entrenched in the space of, um, you know, um, real estate and so forth, whatever. She knows the, the, the universal inner workings of it and has access through through her certification to all sorts of information that wouldn't otherwise be available to people, right? Even you know, the common realtor. And uh, so we're incorporating a housing unit uh, or component rather to um, the Mind Plug Academy program. And so when people get out and they've gotten their education, they got their college education, so forth, and they're ready to you know, some of the society, and one of the big issues is in South Carolina, you, you get out of jail after being in prison for 30, 40 years, which is easy to get, mm -hmm. um, then you've got nowhere to go. So um, what what we're doing is we're creating uh, a system where uh, they will be building the homes that, uh, you know, the housing that the people, the other returning citizens following them will be living in. Because there, there is an overwhelming need for that, and there is no real plan or program um, that is addressing that in any real effective way. You know, just people, you know, doing whatever they can to maybe come up, you know, off of whatever kind of funds might be allocated. So those that love to run. So yeah, man. Um, the uh, that that's where it's at. That's where it's at. Uh, with with that, you know, the housing, the education, um, you know, the critical thinking, major component of it, obviously, because that is that is how I was able to have a different outcome than a great many of my peers from my my criminal uh, period in my lifetime. You know. Yeah. And uh, having survived the 80s and the 90s, you know, the, the difference between my outcome and their outcome was that I thought more critically about what it was that I did. Uh -huh. So, you know, that's that? what I encourage. Uh -huh. That's what I teach. Which is dope, because you show that you can't find ways to, to, you know what I mean, to change, to find ways to get out, basically, if you really want to. If you want to change the oh, way absolutely. you live and, and absolutely, everything. absolutely, because you know we we always hear but, the same narrative. You know, well at least me, I'm from LA, so I come from a gang banging background, and it's like once you in, that's it. There's no getting out. It's you know blood in, blood out, all this kind of stuff. But very, very, very dramatic, very cinematic. Yeah, but not not true. Not it's true. not the reality. It was one when the world was a lot smaller to people and mm -hmm. people didn't know that you could move six, seven blocks in a different direction and be in all the damn world. The idea of going anywhere, especially when you don't have resources, was just not something people knew. Yeah. About the world that might have been somewhat true maybe 35 years ago, but isn't true anymore. And then I, I guess a lot of people just haven't checked lately. But that, because that ain't true. That's, that's some outdated shit. Three and a half decades ago. Right. <laughs> right. But, um, move out. Move out. Go go somewhere else. And there you go. It's all over. There's yeah. no there's no system. There's no system keeping you in bed. Oh, it seems that uh, so so such and such doesn't want to bang anymore. He's moved over to uh Sausalito. Uh, we're gonna have to send a crew over there to re redeem him and bring him back, punish him and bring him back into the gang. Like right. you know what I mean? yeah. romanticized hip hop hyperbole. 
Right. And that's the, that's thanks thanks to rap. Thanks to rap, exactly. There's so many myths we rap. have to dispel, but like especially to yeah. our youth, man, they 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 live and die by some of this stuff, and they and it's like it's hard to come yeah. to tell them like it's not real. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean you know it's it's like it's like any other indoctrination. It's like any other you know um, religious propaganda. You know. It hits people in places of their, you know, aspect of their beings that don't have anything to do with logic or thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, it's only molding, and 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 again, dealing with uh, aspects of the human experience that just are no longer applicable. It used to be very important that you know you established your place in the tribe. You know, your survival was contingent on. Right? So if you weren't a hunter, you had to be a gatherer. You were a gatherer, you had to be a grower. You a grower, you had to be somebody who served some kind of purpose for you to be able to uh, be included and kept within this, you know, this community or whatever, right? And, mm-hmm. you know, that's what made people as they are so communal, okay? but um, and, and needing to roll and go along with things, even if it didn't uh, align with their own, oh, wait. Um, unless you got one, um, and um, you know, even if it didn't involve, uh, I just mean, um, <laughs> even if it didn't involve, um, uh, what was I saying? Um, like the best interest of yourself, that you still going along with the yes, communal. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Even if it didn't involve your best, your best interest, even if it didn't include your best interest, you went along with it for the sake of belonging and the sake of value. Mm-hmm. Uh, many people still, like they did so many thousands of years ago, get their sense of value out of the being included in the tribe or the club or the gang or the clique or the crew yeah. or whatever. The institution, whatever the institution is or whatever that institution's memes are. Yeah. Right? So, because memes are what people live by, memes what drive their, their ideas and their thoughts and their beliefs. Memes are extremely powerful. I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, speaking about memes in the um, in the coming um, weeks and so forth um, on my different uh, social media, you know, engagements. I've been doing something in the last uh, week or so called My Plug Minutes, and it's just a minute long post on Instagram where I speak about a particular thing um, very briefly in the kind of uh, bite size. Um, episodes that people are at this point, based upon what the psychological community has assessed, able to consume because they have the attention span of a goldfish. <laughs> that's what they're saying. That's what they're saying in the psychological community. That's that's been the latest. That's the latest information in terms of those types of measurements yeah. that people, on average, have the attention span of a goldfish. And it gets shorter with each passing swipe on Instagram and, and Facebook. <laughs> yep. yeah. They want the least amount of investment of their time and attention and the maximum return on that little investment. Yeah. Very cognitively dissonant. That's that that doesn't make that doesn't make sense. That's not logical. That's like it's raining outside, but I don't want to get wet, but I'm on my way. Like, Yeah, that's how a lot of us operate. Yeah, that's how like, a lot of us operate. The way uh, I see it is, us. it's like it's a mob rule society, you know. Like majority wins. So the the easiest way to control us is to break us back down into these individualized pods that we experience on our social media and our platforms, where you're not really interacting with your neighbor per se anymore it's just you know what I mean right there you know what I mean that's so, that's that's right that's that's exactly right brother yeah that's so, exactly right yeah and they just control them exactly so, right. yeah I, feel I like, mean until people decide they're gonna do you know what what's necessary to acquire a reasonable degree of understanding that they have to have in order to be in control of their lives and the way that the people who are in control of their lives are until people uh, step up to that that uh, responsibility, then nothing will change. It doesn't matter how much uh, 
awake, awokenness, waking, whatever the yeah, fuck it is that, that they think yeah. they're doing. <laughs> none of that matters. Right. None of that none of that matters. It's like, you know. Yeah. You got you're all dressed up with no way to nowhere to go. Yeah. No sense of direction. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. So yeah, man. So once again, plug your um your Instagram, like for anybody who might want to check out the um yeah yeah um seminar. What is it? You doing like seminars or more like? You said you was you you was using your platform. Um. Well, I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Cavario C A V A R I O online mm -hmm. um which is the same as my instagram cavario period online um and so on my instagram i've done i mean my youtube rather i've done a lot of that stuff you know i've, I've given a lot of um information you know on different things uh on that platform and i'm about to begin releasing things that i've been recording um, on that platform once again in the interim I am on my Instagram pretty frequently, um, and from this point forth, um, I think I'll be doing, uh, you know, Monday through Saturday, something like that, doing a My Plug Minute. Um, but, of course, there are my books, you know, so you go to my website, www.cavario online, cavarioonline.com, and you can you can get my books, um, Raised by Wolves, it's my autobiography. Mm -hmm. um, Raised by Wolves, Inside the Life and Mind of a Gorilla Hustler. It's my life story, my true life story. No uh -huh. hip-hop, no hyperbole, just the real shit. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and um, my second book is a political fiction piece about how the mob and the CIA conspired to put the first black president in office and why. And that was written in 1999 before Obama. But it's about a black senator out of Chicago. Uh, <laughs> deep. <there you> go. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's deep. <laughs> and um, then my third book is an anthology of the top 10 stories that I did in my first publication. I had two. One was called Don Diva. That is where the third book comes from. And it's called Old Gangsters and Young Guns. Mm -hmm. And um, it has the top 10 stories that I did. And those top 10 stories are the top 10 because these are the 10 stories that represent the extremes that result from that lifestyle. Uh -huh. So it's the most, the most violent, the most elaborate operation, um, most flamboyant, uh, um, the, 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 the youngest organization, criminal organization, the youngest and most successful, a uh, couple of the youngest and most successful criminal organizations um, in that time. I'm talking about young, I'm talking about like, you know, 14, 15, 16 years old and, and, you know, making tens of thousands of dollars on a daily basis. So you're talking about, you know, children with no education running a criminal organization uh, yeah. to the financial tune of uh, millions of dollars. Um, um, shout out to my man, Sean Hartwell um, from the FCK prison brand. Um, Cause he is a primary in that particular story the E Port Posse, which was the Kid Kingpin's issue of my first publication, Don Diva. Yeah. So Don Old Gangsters and Young Guns has his story, has that yeah. story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Don Diva was my magazine. I used to, <laughs> I used to be a faithful reader. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Definitely. Yeah, you know that was that was an effort to try and bring some balance to the miscommunication of that lifestyle that hip-hop was largely perpetuating you know like you're telling people a lot of a lot of shit if i was a kid who didn't know the streets and i listened to rap and i watched youtube videos and so forth i would have the impression that that lifestyle is, is the coolest shit since you know sliced fucking bread bro yeah you know i would i would have no reason not to think that that's some cool shit. I, yeah yeah people go to jail and people get killed but you don't hear about that shit as much as you hear about bottles and broads and bags and, and yeah. balenciaga and mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like if you're a kid who comes from nowhere and nothing and that's being shown to you as a potential and the worst that can happen is you go to jail you know or get killed and you and you lived in some place where like you I mean, the stories, you know the stories, bro. You you from where you from, from where I'm from, you know what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
there's a lot of people who don't understand how bad you know some of the experiences of some of these some of the young people have had at, 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 at five or six seven eight years old you got to go outside and you know try to find a way to make some money you know because right. the lights is off and there's yeah. no food in the refrigerator and you ain't seen your mother in three days and all and type of got- shit you know what I mean? siblings you got a younger than you, your sister. Yeah, you got right. siblings younger than you that that's looking at that's right. you like what that's you right. know what I mean. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you know, it wasn't about trying to um, uh, Don Diva. It wasn't about preaching. You know, it wasn't about you know telling somebody what they shouldn't do. It was about giving you something that was based in a reality of that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. As opposed to the fantasy and the hyperbole of that lifestyle, which was what most of their exposure was prior to Dark. Right. It was just the rap. Even the ones who live in the hood, because of their lack of insight into the reality of it, all they could really put in their mind about it was they watched mm-hmm. somebody whom they known since they were five or six years old, who struggled and had it really rough at home, you know, uh, start making some money next thing you know they driving nice cars and they you know wearing jewelry and making money and so forth whatever and then you know they maybe go to jail or get killed but that they never would have had had they not taken that chance and for a lot of them it's like well shit i'm gonna die I'll, i'm gonna die like he died anyway without making some money or not yeah, I'm gonna die early anyway. Yeah, my yeah. Boy, my name gonna be in that wall anyway. My name gonna be in that wall. Rest in peace, Tata. It's gonna be up there. Yeah, and you kind of talk. I'm, that's almost, what you're I'm almost eighteen. Supposed to do, yeah. Like you know, you're supposed right. to. I'm almost do eighteen. This I'm about and... to die. So yeah, I might as well make some money. Yeah, leave a little, make a little name for myself. You know. Yeah, but they don't understand that that actually, that attitude, that belief actually makes them make the kinds of choices that make that outcome come out. It is not merely the choice of choosing the street. It is the choices that you make within that choice that leads you to premature death or incarceration, indefinite incarceration, you know, any incarceration. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, and, and I know, how do I know that? Because I lived it. Yeah. That's how I know it. Yeah. It's not theory. I'm not some academic sitting somewhere going, well, statistically and theoretically, that if the person was, no, I did it. I did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Left no stone unturned. Experience is the best teacher. And and, yeah. and, and here and here I am. Right. Here I am. I right. won that game. I mm-hmm. won that game. I did everything and had to go with it. Got everything you want to get from it. And then got up one day and decided I didn't want to do this anymore. And went on and did something else with my life. I won that game. Yeah. Made and the millions, had all the jewelry, did all the won that game. And that's and the I story will tell you, you don't it was hear. a waste of my <laughs> it was a waste <laughs> to my talent, a waste of my true ability. I was being distracted for almost twenty years from what I was truly capable of. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you know that that is the that's that that's I'm coming from that perspective. I'm coming from a like a really practical. I get it. I know what it is because I have walked that walk, and I'm telling you what I'm telling you so that you, whether you decide to do it or not can have a better chance of surviving because you're making more thoughtful choices. That's it. Right. Not thinking every thought that comes to your mind is a good idea. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do this. Like, wait a minute now, player. Hold on now. Let's think about it. Now, that might get you what you want most immediately, but will that ultimately get you something else you don't want? Right. And if so, then you can think about a new plan. But most of us will be like, and I've been like that. But most of my was even back in the 80s and in the, in the 90s, my would be like, no, man, you're better. Because no, because they have fallen in love with the plan and the plan is going to get them what they want right now. And right that's all now. they care about. Yeah. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Even if that same plan gets them all the shit that they don't want later. But that'll be after I spent the money and had the fun and all that. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah, how And it's almost like that's when you realize I mean, was, it's like, was it really worth it? It never is, brother. And this is coming from somebody who, again, won the game. And it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Yeah. If I, I understood my true, the application of my aptitudes, I wouldn't have wasted my time with that shit. I didn't. Yeah, because it, it really doesn't lead you anywhere. Like, 
the money it's hard to explain but it's almost like it's not really yours so somehow it doesn't spin the same it doesn't like right. like you know i mean you don't you you don't value it the way that you should especially when you're young you don't value it the way you should because you don't what what do you know you know you didn't have it and then suddenly you got it you got and it. you think now that you've got it this is a permanent condition. Yeah, like I and got it. So this easy is to it. Get. This is this is me from now on. That is, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be a guy who got money from now on. Nothing can change that. Yeah, but you know, it's so many circumstances that that impact even the most effective hustler's ability to do what he does. There are so many things that you do not control. They shut down the borders. Nothing coming in, like in nine eleven, or the COVID shit. Mm-hmm. Like in, with the COVID shit, there are people in other countries who who was reliant upon being able to get their product into this country and their money out of this country. Fuck. Yeah. Um. Back when nine eleven happened. Mm-hmm. Um. And they shut they shut shit down. They shut down the plane. Like that shit. It, it, it fucked a bunch of people because they don't control any of those things. So despite their drive, their intelligence, their motivation, their structural, you know, uh, um, attitude, how they know how to put a program together, there were circumstances that were beyond them that they that just had the impact they had. It was shit they can do about it. It was it was no no hustling around it. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So and those are extreme circumstances. But there are many not as extreme circumstances that impact a person's ability to be effective in whatever it is that they do no man is an island right Uh so there are so many cats who do not understand that there are circumstances beyond you that are directly connected to your ability to acquire wealth in the street right Uh and if those things kick in at any given time against you then you you stop making bread. So spending your money like you know you're gonna make the same money again tomorrow is is a fool's folly. It's a fool's folly. It really is. Because I've had it happen. I've had blocks where I'm making thirty, forty thousand dollars a day, and then I come out there one day and they put a mobile precinct on the motherfucking block. Just like that. From 10, 30, 20, whatever a day to Virtually none, because you don't still do whatever they're gonna do, but it ain't the same. It ain't the same. <laughs> it ain't the same. Yeah. You can you know what I mean? So now your your program been disrupted. But you know, your money is coming in differently, but your you, you know, your 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 car notes are still the same and your mortgage and your rents are still the same. You know what I'm saying? And your habits are still the same. And if you ain't working, you know, on the block and moving around and doing your thing for twelve hours a day and you it slowed up because you know, the police is doing what they're doing, whatever. So, you know, you're falling back from the block a few hours more a day, whatever, whatever. You know what you're doing? Why are you doing that? Short spending man. your money. Yeah. Yeah. You're spending your money. So your money's not coming in like it was, but you're, you're spending, spending it like you were. Yeah. And and in some cases, you're spending it more because you ain't doing shit. You just you you chilling, you waiting for you waiting for the prices to drop, or you know you waiting for the for the drop to end, or whatever. But you're spending money. You 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 really enjoying your lifestyle. You're really enjoying all the labor you've been put in, but you're not really paying attention to the fact that you're you're you got you know shit going out, but it ain't, 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 ain't coming in like that. Coming in like you know, and you got a few hundred thousand dollars. You can, you might be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? For a couple of months, a few months, depending on your spending habits or whatever, you got a few hundred thousand dollars away or whatever, whatever. And back in my day, everybody had a few hundred thousand dollars. Uh-huh. Every, every, every 12, well, you know, every 17, 18, 19 year old, not every, but, you know, in the paid in full era, we were making money we didn't understand the value of. Uh-huh. You didn't? So we didn't realize that if you're making. If you're doing uh, two stacks a day, uh-huh. nigga, you, you're bringing in 60000 a month, nigga. Right. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, yeah. you bringing it. You, you don't, you don't, you don't have. You, you 16 years old. You don't have a damn mortgage well, or a car note or whatever. Uh, or, or nothing. You yeah. probably you still living with your mama. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nigga, you're making 60000 a fucking uh, month, man. And believe me, if you're making, if you're doing 2000 a day for, you know, a couple of weeks, inevitably, if you're putting in that same effort every damn day, you'll be double that in no time. So if you made $2,000 a day for a month, that following month, you're probably going to be doing $4,000 a day. Because it grows in exponentials like that. It grows like it doubles and then doubles and then doubles. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you, your nose into the grindstone so much, you know, you're so busy, you know, going to grab the work and going to the table and prepping the work and then getting out of the block and moving to work and going back. You're so busy doing that shit, you're not even paying attention to the fact that your shit is building, building. You're just trying to keep up, keep up, keep up. First, you're trying to build up. Then, that's, you, you know, you're trying up. to keep up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's <laughs> yeah. like, damn, man, we need, we need, it used to be a thousand dimes a day was good enough, man. Now we, we got to prepare 10,000 dimes uh a day you know what i'm saying it's like that shit is some shit yeah that shit is some shit man like yeah. people 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 have these concepts about getting the bag and they or they they'll they'll run oh i gotta get the bag i get the bag you don't even understand if you unpack that statement get the bag you unpack that statement bro there's so many motherfucking details to getting the bag yeah. Are you kidding me? It ain't just, it ain't like, it's not like, it's, they say it like it's bags out here laying around and, oh, there's one. It's yeah. like it's an Easter egg hunt or some shit like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get the bag. So it, it's all commercialized. Yeah. All commercialized. It's all commercialized. That's commercialized. my point. Yeah. Take a look at a post that I did um, earlier today. Uh-huh. Um, and it's a, it's a, uh, a Hot Wheels car. Uh-huh. Cocaine white Lamborghini. It's in the pack. It's in the pack. Right. And, that's, it, and that's what it says on it? Cocaine white Lamborghini. Cocaine white Lamborghini. It has Meech's face on it. It has Meech's image on it. Oh. It says Black Mafia Edition. Oh. I do not think it's real. But it definitely is a thing. Like, I Come look on, at my page. Man. My IG. But yeah, see, that's and I did a whole... And I did a, I did a caption. I did a... a Kind of a you know heavy caption about about the commercialization and the commodification of these types of elements and how when you take and you commercialize or commodify those kinds of things, you take you present them out of context. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you wrap arsenic in a pretty package. It's if you eat arsenic. that shit, yeah. you're gonna die. Yeah, it's still arsenic. It don't matter. Still arsenic. Yeah. Yeah. So these are facts. You know, man. Yeah, that's that's really where, I, 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 where I'm at with it. Like, I just wanna I feel like, cause I you know, I have a, a fifteen year old, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I know he's a little more aware because I've talked to him and everything, but I still I pay more attention to the youth culture through him. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, of course, and absolutely, it's, as it's you should, just, yeah. as you should, because you shouldn't be engaged in it to the degree that you can see it, or, that, you know, you shouldn't be engaged in it to the degree that you, like, you you don't need him, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, right. you should need him to know what the hell they're doing, otherwise, like, what are you doing? Right, 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 <laughs> like, right, you know right, right, what I, teenagers are fucking doing, you yeah, know what I mean? have to tap like, you, in, you that, know That's what how mean? you keep your finger on the pulse, that's right, that's how you keep your finger on the pulse, <laughs> Yeah, you know I, what I mean? Like, what's talking you, what y'all on, what y'all, what yeah. y'all talking about? What y'all, what y'all, y'all doing, what y'all, what's going on, what's, what's yeah. popping over here? And, um, yep. you know, they, they are at a place where I feel like all of these, these things have been characterized to them. Like they're over dramatized to the point to where mm-hmm. they kind of feel like in order for them to make their mark in the world, they have to outdo that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, whatever that is. Yeah, whatever that is. And that's in their whatever minds. Whatever that is. That, because that, that's, that's right. in their mind. It's all in their fucking mind. Yeah. And, and it's like, wait, hold on. That's not what's going on out here. Like, Mm-hmm. I, I want you know. I it's, want, it's yeah, it's subjective like a motherfucker, down. brother. Yeah, it's it's, it's super subjective, and, and it's too serious for that. Yep, yep. And everybody, you know, too serious. And I, I just feel like if we could slow down a little bit and 
and ha like kind of have a conversation, then we could understand that the, we don't have to be, you know, when that you, to each other. We don't have to. When, when you say, <laughs> when you say slow down, mm -hmm. what do you mean? Okay, yeah, that's a broad term. I, I could use a lot of things in that place. I, it could be unplug. It could be, you know, just, it's like a... It's still too general, though, bro. Still, It's still too what I, general. What, too I mean, general. what I mean like, is... Like, really, what? What I'm really saying is we need to... I want to say it's like... We just need to change what we're paying attention to. If that makes sense, does that make more sense? Uh, that makes absolute sense. That that's right. a very specific thing. That's a very specific. It's 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 specific as a directive. Change what we're paying attention to. That's saying something. That gives a person a clear understanding. Uh, in the direction of the actions that they should be taking. So then a critical question can be asked mm -hmm. after that, like change it to what? Then you tell them what to change it to. Change it to something that's going to be more self-informing. Change it to something that's going to tell you less about how you ain't shit because you ain't got the latest Gucci, Balenciaga, Louis, MCM, Supreme, you know, whatever the fuck. Yeah, whatever. You know, is change, the change the, that. Change tuning yourself. Right. Change tuning yourself into uh, and being a fan of something that is constantly degrading you and telling you, you ain't got this, you ain't got that, you ain't shit like me, you know what I'm saying? You ain't the shit like me, and I'm gonna fuck your girl because I got everything. Stop being a fan of that shit. Stop paying attention to that shit. Stop yeah. Pay attention to that shit. Pay attention to what the fuck is really doing, what it's really saying. Yeah, because like, you know before I mean? you came yeah. on, actually, what I, was speak what I was speaking about was that. Like, the things that we pay attention to, these things that we watch on YouTube or click on on Instagram and give likes to and watch and all of this stuff, that's like, those are like votes, meaning that's what you want to see and the the rest gets pushed to the side. You just get, it gets filled up with more of that. Thanks. You know what I mean? So we got to stop paying attention to that kind of stuff, the stuff that we claim is entertaining. It's not really that entertaining a lot of times. It's something silly or something like that, or it makes you feel like like some of that stuff, like it'd be Will and Jada or something like that, and now you feel like, okay, everybody else knows about it. I don't want to be the left out or something. Let me, let me tap into that. That, that gets... That gets back to what I was saying earlier about the tribe, about being included or being validated by being included in the tribe. That's it. that's that's the meme tribe. So whatever the latest meme is, if you're not into yeah. the latest meme, then when you go to engage on social media, you can engage with the level of individual or those particular types of individuals that you manage to finagle your way up close to because they can't really see who you are, what you are, how you are, where you live, what you have, right? They only see what you present. And you've presented yourself in such a way as to be validated and included and accepted by these people. So you and these people, they are in step with what the latest means are. What are the latest things that people are talking about? Whether they are you or in general to stay with in order to be validated you have to stay in step with that you know and, and that's what that is that's 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 the that's the tribe mind yeah it's a tribe mind yeah it is i don't i'm and not everybody can't like i'm gonna tell y'all right now if people listen to this, check this out i don't know who you are right check this out you might not be bright enough to not be a sheep to not be a a monkey, um, a schmunky, like a a yeah. robot schmunky, like a robot, a robotic half sheep, half monkey, living your life on a hamster wheel. Like if you find yourself doing that, and you understand that you're doing it, and you won't stop doing it, that's you. Yeah. 
that's you. And it's a lot of you, so you're going to do the tribe thing, and that's cool. We just want to be able to put a bell on motherfuckers so we can know where you are at all times. Yeah. Those of us who are not robotic schmunkies on a hamster wheel. Mm-hmm. Oh, everybody can't be saved, bro. Yeah. Everybody can't be saved. Yeah. That's I bad. doubt anybody that's watching this is a robotic schmunky because they found this. <laughs> but Good. there are Good. That, many. That, that, out- that was meant. That was meant to 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 touch them. If if they if they yep. are that, it was meant to make them go. No, I'm not that. If it, yeah, if nah, not in case that, somebody in like, case yeah, one yeah, stumbled on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? In case one stumbles on it. Yeah, but yeah, that's facts, man. Like, I don't know what we need to do to, to change that, like, but I feel like um there is a definite need to realign ourselves with real life. Because as a society and but especially that's another, as a that's another that's another generalism bro that when you say real life that's that's way too broad that's way too broad you, well, you, you lose you lose somebody for real for real when you say something like that because they might be thinking something entirely different about real life mm-hmm. like get 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 narrow that shit down what do you mean by real life what i mean by real life is what what we're like i tell people a lot of times we you've never seen actual real life on television so whether or not you've seen something on real life don't have producers and directors right right you know what i mean like everything you see on tv is framed and filmed and presented to you to tell some sort of narrative to invoke some sort of thought or emotion or something Meme, meaning, it's right. meaning. That's what it is. Yes. So, and it's somebody, somebody's idea. Yeah, it's somebody's Not idea it and and presentation. It's That's like the news and everything. Yeah, yeah the news. No matter is what not it is, inter- it's whoever it's not produced it. It's information. Their idea. It's it's infotainment. You know what I mean? So, what I mean by real life is like when you we see people get the and commit suicide and all of this stuff from just looking at their phone and scrolling and seeing people that they think is living some sort of life that they're not. And they... I'm missing everything. I'm missing everything. Everybody's you get what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you have to cut that out. That It's not real life. It's, it's not... Um, it's not real. It's a presentation of something. But you, what is what is real? How would you define real? What I would define real is knowing that we all real is a knowing. We all come from somewhere that we don't quite know. Like we were all babies and don't really remember before that and all this kind of stuff. And after we pass, none of us know what happens, which means that you and I are just as valid in being who we are as anybody else is entitled to be who they are on this earth. And you do not have to feel superior or inferior to anyone else because there's you get what I'm saying. And but all of these things are influenced mostly by what we call media or social media. So, so real in a sentence, real is what? I would say real is knowing that you are, it's like, um, I don't know how to uh, define real because that's something scientists would haggle over. It's like, no, 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 no. You get, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have, you definitely have a, you introduce the percept. You introduce this in this. That means you have a concept. You have something in your mind, a structure in your mind that is, in your mind, real. That this is real. That's what I'm at. Share that with us. Yeah, I There's guess no right or wrong. To that. I guess it, real. Your shit. Real to me is determined by my personal experience. My personal experience is, is not someone else's and anyone else's personal experience is not mine, right? 
and I cannot let I cannot be influenced by outside you know influences as to what my personal experience is is what I'm trying to say but you but you are yeah we are are. we are to a point but it should not be to a point to where I feel so inferior to someone else or to other people that I deem my existence to be not you know you get what I'm saying like I don't need not, to be here. Not. so we talking about we talking about your definition of real right yeah I guess I was talking about as to w- how I used it in that in that setting so, you know what I mean you talked about scientists talking about real yeah, I'm because sure I don't want to get into real life. Have, what's real have, life? Have, have, I mean, because sure. you know they say we live in a we live in a virtual reality. That's another theory they have. That, that's just it's just another theory, and, and, and the theory has has great basis. You know? It could be. I um, I, I'm definitely a person that appreciates you know you know those quantum theories. You know, I'm a tremendous fan of quantum physics. Me too. So, you know, in quantum reality and so forth, and, and based upon the premises uh, around which that that idea is structured, um, us potentially experiencing a a virtual reality is very plausible. Very very plausible. Well, I I believe so, but I believe. I I believe that I see it from the other way around, which is our our interpretation of a virtual reality based on what we've created is definitely a reflection of what we experience. That's all, you know what I mean? That's how we recognize it. So, yeah, technically it could be a virtual reality or is it that our what we call a virtual reality is our reflection of a reality. Like we've created a reality. It exists in I mean, that's, its that's, if, 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 if what you're saying that if this is a man-made concept or something like that, is that, is that what you're... you're no, nah, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that what we experience, we interpret in, ver- in a lot of different ways. And us creating a virtual reality is definitely us experiment with trying to create what we experience. So maybe in that we have created it. So we see the, you get what I'm saying? We don't exactly. You're saying that, mate, you're saying this is why you are, you consider the possibility that we may be living in a virtual reality. Yeah, by we, definition. You feel, you feel that we may have, we, we may have created it already. Yeah, by, by definition, like, because we experience reality, we're able to create what we call a virtual reality. And we've done it to the point to where now we can we can see the similarities of between our virtual reality and the and this reality. Uh-huh. You see what I'm saying? Like like a so it's like a it's like a uh, uh, You said it's like a what? Chicken, like a conundrum, like yeah, you know, yeah. Something, it's almost like, almost like the which, which came first, chicken or the egg? Did, yeah, you know? or like a mirror in a mirror. We put a mirror in a mirror. Right? Did we? Right. Yeah. Wait, you breaking up? Or did is this? Can you hear me? Somebody cover 
hold the flow is your reason. Smoke more than I need to give me your reason. Don't give me the beast. Then you get that step. I see I'll be your green like a vegan. I'm black and I'm proud on James Brown. Just thinking out loud like Ed Sheeran. No hero, just me. So I talk suit like me. So and back it up like freak. So leave me be or things blow. I give the pinnacle, many come, many go brag about selling the brand of a meaningful all that they seem to do is sell a job or two. Sell a job or two. That corner group, then thinking they gon' catch me sleeping. But they'll never catch me though. It's the F and A, no question.